tonight on episode 85 of The Loaded Couch. No more drunk employees. Punching a producer can't be that bad. Is that a vagina? I'll have milk with a side of vodka. Questions from listeners? And... Beer. Beer. Reach in at your own risk. This is a loaded couch. All right, it's episode eighty-five of the Loaded Couch. I'm Scotch Hound with Whiskers. Whiskers, nice. Okay, <laughs> uh, we are short uh, pigeon peg leg and a Celtic fox. Uh, Celtic fox is out with his uh, broke back, uh, broke leg mountain uh, issues. Pigeon moved down to Texas, so he's got some moving in and non-internet issues. Uh, so it's just going to be the two of us uh, tonight getting this show together right before the holiday. And uh, just to start off, uh, Whiskers, what are you drinking? Or what are we drinking, I should say? What are we drinking? You went and see, told you to surprise me. Oh, okay. It's uh, Dogfish Head's Worldwide Stout. Uh, it's, of course, a stout. It's out of Milton, Delaware. It's black, and it's a high alcohol content. I think it's like 16%. And it tastes like it. Doesn't You said it's a little bitter. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? First, the first impression. I know you've had it before and you I've liked it a whole before, lot. And I've liked it before. Um, but I haven't been drinking a lot of beer lately. So this is kind of the first beer I've had in a while. And it's just like a whoa kind of, you know, not easing into it, I guess. Okay. Yeah. It kind of three right into the fire. It, yeah. It just like it's like kind of like you're all in. Okay. All right. Speaking of in the beer news, uh, Labatt. The Canadian brewer is ending their promise to employees to give them free beer for life. Well, that's just not right. All right. The perk of one free case of beer a week uh, will be cut in half by 2018 and then be completely phased out by 2019. Uh, since the company has been taken over by uh, InBev AB, the company has been plagued by cost-saving initiatives. And uh, even though InBev made $55 million profit, in 2015, they looked to continue their cost-saving programs. That's just that's like when Clark got the certificate to the Jelly Club. It's like taking that away, you know? <laughs> Taking take back the Christmas bonus that he was exactly. looking forward to to pay for his pool. I gotcha. Well, what do you think? A free case of beer a week for life? Even once you retire, you still get a free case of beer from Labatt's? You got to get tired of Labatt's after a while, or maybe yeah. not. Just being a I mean, how, you know, not everybody's going to utilize it, too. Right. I mean, there might be a couple diehards, but I mean... You know, like I'd probably like. I you think know. a free case a month? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It's if they're bought by somebody else, you get. I just you can't really argue with the argue big, with, with the, the big new man. rules. Uh, anyway, as being part of a you know merger and acquisition, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. It's true. Kind of, you just have to kind of adapt to whatever it is. Roll and with the punches. Roll with it. Yeah. In movie talk, neither of us, I guess, watched a movie. We were racking our brains trying to yeah. think of something that we watched. I feel like but... we have, I, but you were ta- you talked about Doctor Strange already, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, real quick, what did you think of it? I loved it. Okay, so, I mean, you, you'd you seen... It's just, he's a, just a different kind of superhero. It's you'd not... seen some of the cartoons with yeah, him yeah. and stuff. But um, like you... the one you were talking about last week, the um, the animated version. Right. Um, I had seen that before. Okay. And? And I, I like, I really liked it. I thought it ma- matched up really good with the movie for the most part. You know, like there was a couple like little alter. You know, the um ancient one was a female in the movie, which I loved. Right. And um, you know, whereas in the old cartoon, it was uh, you know, they didn't female. make her look overly female. But if you know the actress, like you know that she is a woman. Yeah. yeah, it was very androgynous. Like even the clothes that she wore didn't show much of. I mean, I don't think she's overly busty to start with. But it didn't show much of her shape whatsoever. It was very plain, blah, like you said, an androgynous kind of garb. Uh, they had her head shaved, so there was no yeah, long hair yeah. and stuff. Her voice was even, well, her voice in, in general. I think she played uh, in she like the a, late '90s or early, early '90s, in, uh, late '80s. She was the white queen in um, uh, Lion, uh, Witch of the Wardrobe, the Narnia movies. Right, but in the late '80s or early '90s, I thought she played like a a part where she was again kind of a a woman in a man's world, but she kind of played like a, a manish. I can't remember. I have to look because her name is on the tip of my tongue, and I, and I know that um, once. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But yeah. the um, the look of the movie and stuff like that, the line of it, you really. I loved it. I loved like, the time okay bending. With? Oh well, I I loved the him and Sherlock, and I knew he had that kind of arrogant, like you know, kind of sociopathic type of like 
personality in that. So I knew he'd like really be good, like playing that arrogant, like house like okay. doctor who kind of, you know, has to lose himself to find himself kind of. Now thing. is it funny that Marvel kind of does that as a general rule of thumb for their heroes? Like Tony Stark had to have that fall from grace where he got kidnapped in the desert by the um, Middle Eastern uh, man and you know threatened with death and having the shrapnel and, on himself and all. And seeing and actually watching his weapons kind of like going on into like. Right, it was kind of humbling, and again, yeah, same thing with uh, Doctor Strange. He had and to I be humbled. I think that's probably the the main component of the superhero formula, or the you know self. Right, same thing with Spider Man. Like he thought he was all big and tough, and then Uncle Ben kind of had that accident, which is a little more humbling again, of because of his actions. Just yeah. for the repercussion of his action. But what I loved about this is that, like, with, like, Iron Man, he had, like, a suit. And, you know, it was, like, his genius was attached to his super, you know, his superhero. But right. with, like, you know, Doctor Strange, he has kind of, like, this different kind of, like, even though he has a lot of the same elements as the superhero, he has, like, the cool uh, aspect of, like, it seeming possible to learn how to, you know, cut magical portholes into like other lands right right you know using that to travel and now did they call it magic i i think they did okay yeah i think they did because i know that they just said a lot of it was expanding your mind into what right and you you and centering your chakras and stuff like that and and but i guess they maybe say that it's perceived as magic right 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 yeah okay but so you enjoyed it I loved it. Uh, was the 3D experience, like I kind of said, I, worthwhile? You know what? And I was really, really worried because I, I get nauseous. You know how I get with like certain, even certain video games. Um, So I was really worried that I was going to get nauseous because I, I saw the commercials and I saw, you know, the building bending and right. all that stuff. So I was like, oh, this is either going to make me or break me. But it was not overwhelming at all. And I, I loved it. I thought it was well worth a few extra bucks. Okay. So even with whiskers, go and see it. <laughs> but uh, in movie talk, uh, Naughty Dog's Uncharted and The Last of Us movies look to be in or in limbo, I should say. Uh, Sam Raimi claims Sony is having problems getting the movie moving uh, with possible creative differences from the screenwriter and producer Neil Druckmann, um, the video game creative director. Now I read the uh, the article and he was just saying that um, I guess from the video game the, the like The Last of Us you were very interested in oh what my, you saw with that that cutscene was one of the most depressing things I'd ever seen in my entire life that was kind of very much in the yeah. intro right it was like, you watched I, a lot of that gameplay on I YouTube watched it was a, lot like a of two it hour video of, or something like that yeah I playing? I watched a lot of it I mean, it was just very intriguing to me this was before we had it right on the PlayStation but um. I was just I was just watching it and I was so captivated by it. It like broke my heart. Mm. It really did. So would you look to see this as a live action movie? Would you oh. be interested in that? That'd be a rough one. Yeah. Yeah, I would I, I mean I, I would be interested, yeah. I mean I watch, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Sure. But I I don't yeah, I would be interested in it, but I think it would be a very difficult one to watch right okay if it kind the of falls in line. type of yeah yeah all right uh but yeah it's kind of strange i mean with the creative differences i guess uh sony is holding it kind of close to the vest i guess or at least the creative director is so it's uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what they can kind of turn out with that one mostly i guess the last of us more so than uh you know uncharted for us right um anyway so tv talk what did you watch oh boy um well, we just watched The Walking Dead. Yes, we did. We finished uh, Luke Cage. That's right. We did. We did um, finish Luke Cage. We've been watching Eye Zombie. Okay. Uh, I fell asleep, but we started watching um, the new uh, Jeremy Date. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 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 Grand Turismo. Their Grand Tour. The Grand Tour. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Grand Turismo. No, the video game. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, the Grand Tour. So I was trying to wa- watch it, but I fell asleep. All right, yeah. And I won't get into that yet. We have a little bit of talk, yeah, I think, you, later on that. Yeah. And don't tell me what the bet was. I won't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't want to know. I want to watch it. Uh, but we also watched uh, Chopped Thanksgiving specials. Yes. And we watched uh, some Thanksgiving specials of Beat Bobby Flay. Yep. Which you love. I do. I love Bobby Flay. Yeah. Hey, he's just a good sport. He really general. is. He really is. He like always puts himself out there, and he's like, you know, and he's the butt of the jokes of the two. Is, and, he, uh, and he does it so judges. well. Yeah. yeah, and he does so well. Like, like you said, he's just very, just great guy. Right, I right. like him a lot. Mm-hmm. And we finished Westworld. Not finished, but we're caught up with Westworld. Well, now. except for tonight's episode. Right. Yeah. 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 We gotta and, catch that. Oh, we're um. Oh, we watched uh, 
American Horror Story. Oh, we're caught up with American Horror because yes. I guess they took two weeks off or a week and a half. I week think off? they must have because we had seen the one that was uh, before. prior to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, in TV news, uh, IMAX is working with Marvel and the ABC Broadcast Network in a partnership to introduce the Inhumans. It's a uh, it's a, having first shot the two episodes with IMAX cameras. The series will begin on the real big screen, September uh, two thousand seventeen, and then continue on ABC as a series. What do you think about that? It's kind of like they're going to give you the first two episodes as a movie introduction and then say okay now if you want to continue or if you're interested enough go ahead and finish the series on tv i mean a lot of that could be done with like a lot of the marvel franchise Mm -hmm. i mean if they wanted to go cheaper on the production afterwards with any of like the sequels and stuff like that that is a that's a pretty good idea and then it doesn't give you all those like that kind of lag time and waiting for other movies to come out right if it but again it, it it kind of well this is where and you could tell more of a story in a series than in a movie. Sure, yeah, you can do, you know give a lot more yeah uh, time explaining the characters. I'm a sucker and... for a series. <laughs> <laughs> now, where who who puts the emphasis on which Marvel characters are more important than the others to say okay we're going to continue this one with a movie and we're going to do a series with this. Yeah, but again, if Inhumans wasn't introduced prior to, or are you just going to say off of the uh, Inhumans? Or just, I mean... Because they're already making a deal, or they've already made a deal with ABC that it's going to be a series, but they're going to release the first two episodes as a movie. As a movie. Well, at least on movie In, theaters. Okay. Wait, are they just like... But they're like full length, like feature length? Well, it's two episodes, so I'd assume if an episode is an hour at oh. best, or 45 minutes, maybe you get an hour and a half, maybe two hours, like, depending on the length of the episodes. Can I put this in another perspective that I might understand? Sure. It would it be like someone saying to me like, "Oh, you can watch Game of Thrones, but you have to f- watch the first two episodes in the movies, and then you can watch it on TV." But you have to I would go assume... to the movies twice to go see it. No, 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 because the first two are going to be together as oh, one okay. feature. Oh, okay. Like when we went. Okay. And then uh, after that, it's going to be a series on ABC. Now that's a good question. Is it going to be that you won't be able to see episode one and two if you don't go to the IMAX theaters and watch it in IMAX, or yeah, will they show I... those because episodes that would be as like wrong. a? Right, because then it's going to be, okay, I'm not caught up, and now I have to go and see it. Or maybe they release it on DVD, and that's not good either. Maybe they'll have a, maybe they it's will show them as a series. It's just a way to make you pay like 20 bucks just to start the series. <laughs> so you think it's all for revenue? Yeah, that would that's not right, because we're already paying for cable. Mm-hmm. But I mean, maybe I mean, they're, maybe you, they're just trying to sell the series on IMAX so you get the real impact of what this is I mean, is maybe if they be. release, like, if the show was, like, okay, like, debuting, like, if they were debuting the show in, like, November. Right. And they had, like, a summer sneak peek that if you came to IMAX in August, you can get a sneak peek of the, um... Okay, so you're still thinking that they have to show this the first and second episodes then to start the series once it moves on to TV. Right. For those that have, didn't go to the theaters. But they'll have to show the first episode. Okay, okay. But they just won't have had the IMAX like experience of it, right, you know, right, right, and kind of gotten on the bandwagon while you know early. Sure, yeah. That I mean, if, if it was like that and people had the option, but if you didn't have the option, and you had to go see it, or you couldn't watch, you know, or you'd be like starting weird in the series, right? That wouldn't be cool. Yeah, okay, All right. Uh, also, since we were kind of talking about it already, uh, the Grand Tour. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and Richard Hammond are back. <laughs> I, they're so funny. All right, they're uh, working with uh, Amazon. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson and company are back to their shenanigans. Uh, the show airs every Friday, starting November eighteenth, which it has already aired this past Friday, uh, at an unspecified time. Uh, the first episode is the Holy Trinity. Now, as you said, we kind of did, or I, I at least watched it from start to finish. Uh, you said you started it, but you didn't finish yeah, it. Yeah, no, I fell asleep, but I just loved watching them together again. Like, right. when they came up in their little Mustangs and stuff. So, it's, like, they started off the episode, and this isn't, I guess, too much of a spoiler alert, because it's right in the beginning of it, but they kind of introduce each other, and they're saying, uh, when they first, uh, Jeremy Clarkson first introduces James May, and he's like, he's been fired from this, he's been fired yeah. from this, he's been fired from this. <laughs> And then James May introduces Richard Hammond with a little bit of a joke. And then he's been fired from this. He's been fired from that. And then Richard Hammond goes and introduces Jeremy Clarkson and says, the only one of us that has never been fired. So I'm guessing him punching his producer in the face didn't get him fired, but they just didn't renew his contract. (laughs) Exactly. But I'm glad to see that he made his way over to Amazon. 
Oh, absolutely. And that Amazon's taking advantage. Because like you said, the chemistry between oh, these like, guys is... Like, none of them have been able to, like, duplicate that. Like, I've tried to even watch, like, the American one. And, right. Like, the, it's just not the same. Yeah, Just, I like, mean, the three of them together just has, like... The, it's just such an awesome dynamic that they have. And the, it's, like, even with their chemistry and the shenanigans that they do pull in the show, you still do get a full review of the cars that they're driving. You really do. I will still never forget the day when he, they were driving the three, uh, the three wheeled car, oh, yeah. and it kept tipping over every five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> He's doing it on purpose, the idiot. Uh, what was it? it oh, I can't, uh, the was... Robin, the Fiat Robin. Yes, uh... that's what it was. I was like, oh my gosh, it's like a tricycle. Well, yeah, and you heard what he said. It was just to get away from uh, gas tax, I think, because it wasn't a car <laughs> that they made. That car. It was such. Instead of putting the one wheel in the back, the drive wheel in the back, which other cars had done. They put it in the front, yeah. It's but if it literally tipped over every five, like every five minutes, not right. even. It's just like, oh, a bend. Yeah, yeah. The tip the car just tipped <laughs> well, over. Let me see if I can take this corner. <laughs> well, the funny so part was that they had like celebrities that were just randomly out walking, like their dog, or out for a run that helped them push the car back over oh again after he'd been laying there for a few minutes. <laughs> Now, the amazing part was that the car actually started. You didn't have, like, gas settle, like, in the engine weird or I something know. like that. Any fluids kind of mess up the engine starting up again. Unless they did, and they just kind of handled that off camera for the comedy aspect of it. <laughs> or when they built the... Remember when Jeremy built the uh, toilet on the back of the uh, <laughs> yeah. camper? <laughs> Yeah. And they, it, well, that was when they were in the Arctic, right? It was on the back of that big Toyota. Oh, was it? I don't and then he started driving were. while James May was back there taking a dump on the... Uh, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> Clarkson! So yelling at him. <laughs> oh my god they were so fun all right so uh beer thoughts it's 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 bitter it's bitter but i'm in i'm adjusting to it now it has a, it definitely has an odor to it like if you put your nose in the glass it has like is it a like, yummy odor or it's almost like a caramely odor odor but it has like a burnt kind of caramel yeah. feel, like, uh, smell to it. I mean, the taste of it isn't bad. It is very, it does have a, a definite bitter more so than any other stouts yeah. out there kind of um It's not as smooth taste. as like a lot of stouts. It has like more of that kind of like a little bite to it. Which I think is probably just the higher alcohol content. Yeah. Ex oh, it definitely is. But I mean, the aftertaste, but is it bothering you? Um, no. All right, food pairing? <sighs> um... <laughs> well, first off, yay or nay? Would you? Yay. Okay. And food to go along with it? Um, That German turnover I had today. What is it? Beer gox or? Oh, I have no idea. Whatever it was called. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, was... that, that little. Uh... It was like you said it was kind of like a pasty. If people yeah, know what pasties of, are. It's, yeah. It's kind of like a dough filled like with like hamburger meat onion and potato? spices no i don't no think potato? there's any potato okay no mashed potato or nothing no i don't think was so. the pastry and then there's like gravy fluffy or like crispy uh, or flaky it's, it's it's a little like crusty on the outside but it's it's but it's still more of a dense it's um, doughy it's more and doughy than any, it's more like flaky or something yeah it's not like a croissant it's like more like a uh like a calzone okay all right all right so German, what'd you say? A turnover? I guess, yeah. Beef, uh, beef I, I, hamburger turnover? Beef I want to turnover? say they're called like beer gots or beer cocks. Or, okay. <laughs> I want to say. Nice. Watch your mouth. <laughs> okay. Uh, me, I'm a yay on this beer as well. I'm lo really looking forward to them releasing it again. It's kind of getting into that season, I think, finally, where it's going to be available in the liquor store again. It's I went so, and asked about it already. Did you ask about Rudolph yes, Reserve? Yes, he said that it was coming soon, too. Uh, that's your favorite. Rudolph Reserve is my all-time favorite holiday. At Fagley's Brew Works, Rudolph Reserve. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I was I was go I was there went there in March and and they still had some. They left. still had some left. They, and I was uh, still buying. He had it. a big bottle left. September. And I bought it. No, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I get, bought every. Get your season started early. I bought every single leftover leftover bottle of Rudolph Reserve that I could possibly get my hands right. well, on. That one's super spicy. That's got oh my that gosh, winter spice I and love it. Yeah. I love it. I can't wait. We got to go there. He should have it by now. <laughs> uh, yeah, now that the weather's yes. turning, he probably does. He said a couple weeks, and that was like three oh, weeks ago. Weeks. Okay. All right. We'll check. We're going to stock up. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're going to take a break, and uh, we'll be back with Let's Talk Games. Okay. For more from the Loda Couch, check us out on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. If you like me and would like to follow me on Twitter, 
at Pigeon Peg Leg, and also on Twitch, Pigeon Peg Leg. Pigeon Peg Leg. Hey, this is Scott Chound. If you want to hear more, more from me, you can check me out on Twitter at Scott Chound underscore LC or on Twitch at Scott Chound. All right, we're back with Let's Talk <laughs> Games. <laughs> Whoa, you stole talk from me. That was good. You call, <laughs> totally caught me off guard. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, I'm full of surprises. Yeah, good. We are still drinking. Uh, well, just for everybody who's listening, uh, this is going to be a short episode. We just wanted to fill something in since the other two guys weren't there and... Uh, yeah, the holidays He's are coming. Using me. The holidays are coming. <laughs> I know you guys aren't really paying attention because it's almost Thanksgiving. Well, it's almost Thanksgiving in the U.S. I can't make assumptions for everybody else who might be listening overseas, but and it's time for some cornbread casserole and some apple pie. Ooh, yes. All right. Uh, so we are still drinking. Wait, can I just say one thing about the holiday? Hurry up, Jeremiah of uh, Scotch Hound. Oh. <laughs> Secret identities out of the bag. All right, sorry. No, Scotch Hound made a really super turkey soup today out of the leftover the... Uh, turkey carcass and made the most delicious broth. <laughs> I had a I had a hard time <laughs> fishing out all the bones out of that. I should oh have just cooked the carcass to make the broth first and then put everything in after. It was like it really was like a comfort food, like slithering down your throat. Mm. It was just amazing. Whoa. Okay. It was just sexy. Ooh, that was a sexy turkey soup that you made. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so we are still drinking Dogfish Head's World Ride Stout. Yes. Uh, and let's get right into gaming. Okay. What games did you play? I'll tell you. All right, go ahead. <laughs> we played Super Smash Brothers. Yep. Well, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes. And I was Kirby and everyone else because of my little <laughs> power. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you were Kirby. But you absorbed everybody else's powers that you played them. against. That's the best part of Because you don't change pl- players. Never. No. Not no. ever. You're very set in your ways with yes. Kirby as your fighter. Kirby is my fighter. And if I'm playing another, uh, like if I'm playing Mario Party, I'm always Boo if he's an option. Right. But uh, yeah. What and, else did you play? Uh, we played uh, Peggle. Peggle. You played two. Peggle. I played Peggle too. Yeah. I was trying to hit, some, hit up some of those rainbows. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not a very easy task. It's not. There, some of those are super challenging. Like, yes. they, I mean, even just trying to get all well, of the pins. That's the hardest thing for me. Right. Okay. Because some of them, like the the long super shot. Well, I'm always the troll. I should really broaden my horizons a little bit. Well, that's the thing. You do have to change your characters if you want to do get all the um, rainbows. From what I've found. Okay. Because of their super abilities, there's going to be some of the rainbows that require you to change back to like maybe the uh, the unicorn who farts or uh, <laughs> you know some of the others like the the what is that the, the troll with the billy goat in his in his yep head. or the um, abominable snowman with the bare butt cheeks who freezes the board yep like sometimes you have to oh do and that too. little uh, I always call him TikTok yeah he reminds yeah, me of TikTok he from looks Return like a, to Oz from uh, from Return to Oz yeah he looks like a steampunk version of a garden gnome yes right okay. But, um, yeah, so you played that. Yep. And then you also played some, well, just really quick, you played some... Pinball. Pinball But I was too. not feeling very hand-eye coordinated that yeah, that's night. that's right. I, you know, sometimes I I feel it and sometimes I don't. Yeah. And I just wasn't, it was like, ball lost. <laughs> Every five seconds, I'm like, come on! It's not your time. Uh, have you been playing any app games? I sure have. What have you been playing? Um, I've been playing Quiz Up. I'm still, uh... Hooked on that? You know, top in the charts, you know, in the Game of Thrones category. <laughs> okay. Um, then I'm playing, um, a game called, uh, Hidden Cities. Okay. And it just is like those, um, but it's, it's like one of those, um, you know, f- you know, hidden picture games, but it has all kinds of goals and stuff. It's actually a little overwhelming sometimes. Like Too how much many, stuff to manage? Like, yeah. How many, how many goals and like collections and stuff? Like sometimes you just want a straightforward, you know, find it game, you right. know, just to kind of clear your head. You know, it's kind of like, like a where's Waldo. Right. When you have to feel like you're like, have to accomplish like goals and stuff. You're just like, come on, this is taking the relaxation of the, of the, you know, kind of hidden picture game away from right, it right. because there's just too much other stuff going on i just want to you know so sometimes i just want something simple and then other times i'm like cool i'm like i've got a lot to do i have a lot of uh energy right now i can accomplish some of these goals yeah yeah. it really depends on my mood you know but i do like it i've been playing it like quite a bit okay uh myself and i did one or two micro transactions that's a confession oh i did oh just twice just twice 99 centers okay The, El Cheapo over here ain't happy with the microtransactions. Well, El Cheapo's going to have to deal with it. <laughs> uh, 
All right, myself, I played Steep. Uh, they had the open beta. I think I'm okay talking about it. Um, hopefully so. Anyway, I'm just—I'm not going to say much, but I'm just going to say it looks amazing, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I also played Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Um, that's a parkour uh, kind of game. I just got started into it. I never played the original. Uh, I have it. Um, it's an old 360 uh, game that you can play backwards compatible through the Xbox One. Okay. Jonas was playing a little bit. Um, he was getting a little bit frustrated. He likes more of the fighting and shooting aspect than he does the parkour. He gets lost and he's like, where am I supposed to go? He just likes you to come parkour in real me. life. Just yeah. Jump it all yeah, over exactly. Everything. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. The, the controls are a little bit, uh, there's a learning curve with the controls, uh, cause there's a bunch of different buttons that you have to use. Um, okay. ones that I guess I'm not completely used to. It's not like your regular call of duty. Uh, controls, I guess, that have become like a standard for most shooters, and in a lot of the shooters, there's running aspects, you know, sliding aspects and stuff, and this is a little bit different. So oh, okay. There's a learning curve. Uh, and I also played. And when I was watching him deploy the parachute, it was like there was like. Oh, and he, steep. Yeah, he had to like push them both at yeah, the same yeah, yeah. time, and then but there was like all kinds of like little steps. I'm like, I was like, he seemed to be getting it just fine, but he just like watching the guy free fall and then doing the parachute at the very last second. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah like, and steep. Oh yeah, that's true. He played steep too. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I also played uh, Murdered, uh, Soul Suspect. And that was actually a really cool game. That was uh, one of the games with gold uh, freebies on Xbox. Um, and you're a uh, a detective with kind of a shady backstory. Yeah. Like you had a rough life kind of growing up and stuff, and then you became a detective. Like but then a you detective up... with, a, you know, with a past. Exactly. You got like... And, like, the whole intro is him getting his tattoos to tell his, like, life story, yes. like, where he fell in love, and then his wife was taken from him, and he had, like, when he fell in love, he had a tattoo of, like, a web with two roses over it, and then when his wife died, he had the uh, the one rose uh, shaded in black instead of the, the red that it was. Yep. And, um, and then it's like you have to, as that dead detective, uh, living, um, I guess, still in uh, limbo, or what's another name for limbo? It's, uh... Like purgatory? Purgatory, yeah. Um, you have to figure out or, you know, get yourself, figure out what happened to you. Right, because he's kind of standing over out. his own body. Yeah, but in this purgatory situation, you have to figure out your own murder, I think, right. to get out. And they kind of tell you that early on in the game. But, right um, away. I mean, yeah, yeah. I was like, the, I guess like part of the storytelling. Right? Yep, yeah. So uh, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot th- of things. It was, it was pretty captivating. Yeah, and, and the gameplay of it is clean. Um I, I like the fact I like that it's puzzle based. Like you have to kind of figure th- little things out. Right. They have some questions of once you found the clues, you have to kind of put together the clues of what right. you uh, you know found. Uh, there was some kind of um, there's what they call I think ghouls that will come after you and try to suck your soul the soul out of your body. Oh yeah. yeah. So there is kind of a uh, that's also kind of a puzzler because you have to figure out a way to get around them, uh, cool. which was fun. Uh, and then I like the fact that they have. Like, when you go into an area where you have to find some clues, you can't leave that area until you find Until the you clues. find them, yeah. And I like that, because it makes you go through the entire story. It there, does. So. I, I agree. Cause it can get a little frustrating, I guess, if you can't find them, but... And that's, I mean, that's how, like, a lot of the old, you know, like, even, like, the old Zelda games and stuff like that before, you know, when they were just very linear, you go into the little castle, went through all the rooms. Right. It's like, you couldn't leave the room unless you found the key. So, unless you killed, like, and fought through all the characters, it's like, you couldn't move on to the next board. You couldn't leave anybody behind. Right. right. Whereas, like, in the games that I love, even, like, Ocarina of Time, it's, like, kind of an open world. So, it's like, you can pass by something you're supposed to do, like, a million times and still get distracted from accomplishing your goals. Sure, yeah. And that's a little annoying. Okay. Sometimes. Yeah. Anyway, in uh, gaming going. news, yeah, uh, let's uh, start off with Sony news. Uh, Watch Dogs Two, or is it Watch Out Vagina? What? <laughs> uh, gamer Goron Two Thousand went and found himself a well-rendered vagina when he accidentally blew up a gas line in a back alley, and then noticed an upskirt opportunity, and he figured, "Hey, let's screenshot this and post it." Uh, through the um, Twitter app on his PlayStation. And I guess Sony went ahead and suspended his online service for a week. Why? Because it's not appropriate material to be sharing through your PlayStation. Oh. Because I, I don't know if he did at PlayStation through his Twitter, but they suspended his online account for a week. Because he, Because of something he posted on Twitter? 
Yeah, through his Sony from a game. Again, I don't know if he had, like, hashtag PlayStation, hashtag, uh, you know, Watch Dogs 2 type of thing. Oh, really? But, yeah, they suspended it. But it, there's a well-rendered, I guess, vagina on the NPCs in Watch Dogs 2. Why the people aren't wearing underwear is beyond me. What? So, I don't know if... Have Watch... you seen it? No, there, there is a picture out there if you want to check it out. And I guess it's common. A lot of people have found it from uh, what my understanding is. But um, I'm, I'm assuming that Watch Dogs 2 is trying to get into... Because it's kind of an open world game to start with. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering if they're trying to... Is that to... the, like, internet one? Or the... Yeah, fr- there was I the forget... hacking things and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, you and... played that a little bit. Who well, was, was the, Watch uh... Dogs 1. That was the first one. Just Watch Dogs. This is the sequel now. It just came out. Oh, okay. This it's is... brand new. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think I realized that. Uh, so I'm wondering if they're trying to get into the to some competition with GTA. Oh. Kind of, it's got that open world feel. It doesn't have like the, I guess it's kind of like a questionable type of thing with, uh, you know, what they're showing, you know, vagina yeah. and stuff like that on the NPC. It's not as questionable, I don't think. I, I don't know the full storyline of Watch Dogs 2 yet. I haven't played it yet. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see if this is kind of like their start to picking at the GTA money. It, it, like by just the exploring the universe and like everything. Well, having that detail. huge open world, being a little bit raunchy with yeah. the gameplay, kind of, you know, having that, you know, beating people up, shooting people. Uh, you can steal their cars. Um, you can hack into their phones now and steal that type of information. So it kind of has some similarities, I think, to GTA. I mean, GTA is still GTA. Yeah, yeah. But I guess I I see what you're saying, like, just the similarities and, like, the elements. Right. But then now going with the raunchy with having a a, a rendered vagina on some NPCs if you randomly catch an upskirt opportunity. I just, well, I, well, all the, the only part I just think is weird is that it's like, you know, I mean, what he says on, like, Twitter is kind of his own, like, you know, freedom of speech, you know? Right. But again, I I don't know, well, I don't know if there's some way, because he, I I think he said he posted it through his Sony app, through his PlayStation. Oh, okay. So it's so using he a, their... He was an employee of them? No, no, no. He just has a PlayStation, but it has to go through, like, Sony's interface on his PlayStation. He has a Twitter app. Oh, okay. So he screenshotted it, and I don't know if it instantly tags it as an at PlayStation, you know, okay. or at uh, something with that, or they get to read it just because it went through their online service, which he pays for. Okay. To where they screen that stuff, but yeah, he ended up getting caught and suspended for a week. Hmm. Digital vagina. Anyway. Not sure how I feel about that, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. In Microsoft news, Phil Spencer, I don't know if you know who Phil Spencer is, uh, he uh, hit us with a little something we already foresaw. I said the Lily Couch foresaw. Uh, Scorpio <laughs> is going to be priced higher than Xbox One S. Is this the new one that's coming out in the spring? Year? In yeah, the yeah. spring of next year? Yes, the, the S is just out now. Crazy, but the Scorpio is coming out. Well, it was funny because we've been talking about that, and I know that you listen sometimes to the show and stuff like that, or most times to the show. We've been talking about. Uh, I know Celtics always saying that he thinks with the gaming systems that they're going to try possibly getting into something like the cell phone type of services, where it's like every year they come out with something new, or every two years there's you know you're renewing. Yeah. Which I didn't agree with. I'm kind of completely against. But, I mean, they do that anyway with the possibilities of these S's or, like, the, the smaller versions that they have, which we've talked about prior to. But, I mean, to. that just came out, that, like, S. All right, well, we're two years in, so by next spring it'll be the third year. Or, yeah, I mean, you usually had we had it eight years. You had your, like, you had your Xbox six years 360, like, like, eight years. Yeah, yeah, it was a while. And, well, that's the thing. I think he, uh, Phil Spencer had come out and said that we're not trying to go that way. But... PlayStation just released the PlayStation Pro. Yeah. So I think they felt the need to compete with that because of the, with this new VR push, right. with the new 4K push, with, you know, all the different things that they're just trying to compete, I think. Yeah. So it was kind of that. Well, Even like nowadays people are going to be doing the VR on their freaking cell phones. With, the, with their phone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, I mean, you know. It's I don't know still... if they're going to have the in-depth gaming that you can get from, like, your consoles or a computer yeah. with the VR. But, yeah, that is going to be a new option. But anyway, so uh, he noted uh, this is going to be a premium system. Uh, So the console uh, is said to be more expensive, but not any more expensive than the previous launch prices for a supposed next generation console. So I think we had kind of said the new S came out and I think it's 
300 or 350 but like when we got this xbox one i think it was like 400 okay or 450 if you got like or five if you got a bundle or something like that so i think it's probably gonna be priced in those ranges but he's saying it's not gonna be any more pricey than what an original release next gen console was but it is going to be more expensive than the new S that just was released, which I think we figured already because right. it's got more stuff in it and all. So, that was going to be backward compatible or anything? I'm assuming that's going to be a standard going yeah, forward. Yeah, I think have it to has think. to be. Yeah. I mean, that's something that was a huge release, uh, not this past E3, but the E3 prior to, and everybody's loving it. I mean, they're just. I mean, they can well, say that they have how many more games. you a lot of money games. on your video games, and it's like sucks when you have to move on to another console, console and then all of a sudden you can't play these games that you loved. Speaking of, real quick. Nintendo news. Yeah. The new Switch. I'm not sure that's going to be backwards compatible. So all of our Wii U games and all of our Wii games oh. are going to be kind of just not available. Well, they better be coming right out of the gate with like the best freaking games ever. We're right. And I think Pigeon and I have been discussing uh, really, with Celtic though? and stuff like, like that. Like, what about all the Amiibos and all that stuff we invested in? That's going to be available. And they're going to continue with the Amiibos. But any of the CD, because it doesn't run off of the CD DVDs that we have. Yeah. And it's going to be taking cartridges, kind of like the DS has. Okay. Like, small ones like that? Yeah. Because the Switch is a handheld device. Right. And then it has the add-on power of the dock, which makes it powerful enough to be your console up on your TV. But, now, I was saying to Pigeon, I hope that they work something in to the digital store, where if you purchase the game prior to... There's a way that you can go ahead and register it because there used to be a game with uh, that Nintendo Club that we were joining yeah. into where you could kind of track the games that you had, put in the little codes and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then it said that you had that game and stuff and you can get you know discounts and everything. But I'm hoping that they do something like that with these Wii games and then through the digital store you can download them onto your Switch. Because, I mean, if you want to get rid of your Wii U or Wii... But you still want to play your old compatible, yeah. back, you know, older games. I still love the Smash Brothers for the Wii. The Brawl, uh, right? The Brawl. Yeah. I still, like, that's still my favorite one. I used to love what, I used you to You like love, the cook em up I love the, did more I so love than the, the big I love the Kirby sword. cook em up with his little chef hat on. He's yeah. like, meh. <laughs> and he's like he's like just pulling people out of the air and putting them in his pot. And then right. they're just like, and then it's just like he's collecting food like it's like his business. Right. That's just the best. Yeah, and now yeah. it's like he has that like weird like rainbow sword. Yeah. And I'm like, come on. It's like, and then they're so much better at thwarting you every every turn. Well, I mean. Okay. Which I and like because it's a challenge. But at the same time, I like my old, I like the old style. Sure. But, uh, all right. So in the, yeah, in the Nintendo news, uh, NVIDIA, which is a graphics card company, uh, they dropped some knowledge about the Switch processor uh, finally being rightly selected for third party support. Uh, so in the um, the news, they kind of said that the processor that the Switch is going to have is kind of more suited uh, to the games of the current console generations, like the Xbox One and the PlayStation. Um, and I guess moving forward, the type of processors that are going to be used in the next-gen consoles, that third-party options will be playable on uh, you know, the new Nintendo as well. So it'll kind of open up their abilities to, or for people, I guess, to buy these games that they're already getting but it's going to have more it's not going to have so much i don't think of the family feel that nintendo had previously been going for okay you know where it's a lot of it was just their games and a lot of the games that they wanted wanted they did offer options for call of duty but right. it didn't really compare in comparison right. to like the 360 and all yeah most people who are playing nintendo games are playing them for like yoshi's woolly world the mario party games right like the super smash brothers like the you know like the mary the, the characters that they love like but the, i think that limited their sales then too to the public because right because there's a definite subculture of people that are like nintendo freaks like myself sure but i think it limited day one. just having those options and then kind of a a half-assed option of playing like call of duty because it didn't right. look as good exactly it, didn't have it was quite kind the of following their, and stuff. it was their way of trying to like cross over a little bit right to people where who now like i think they're making the system. options to have a full crossover to make third party a true option on right. this console so mm, i just hope it doesn't lose its like i mean i know i mean whatever they think they need to do to expand and to keep the you know company going but i mean the reason i love nintendo it's because it's like it is. It's my Mario. It's my Kirby. It's yeah. my Luigi. It's like it's fun boo, video and game like my, Yeah, my like Mario Party like board games and like Amiibo Festival. Like it's just it's just a totally different universe of gaming to me. Right, and I love it. It's not so realistic for the people who right. Aren't into it realistic feels gaming. exactly, and it's it's it, it's distinctive. Like when you look at like Mario, like there's you just 
know it's Nintendo. Like, I just love that Nintendo has its own little, like, world. And it's just, like, I just don't want it to be really much more than that. Like, yeah. I love that it has its own little universe. And I feel I would feel sad if it started doing all that kind of crossover stuff. Right. All right. Uh, still yay in your beer? Yes. Okay. Still yay in my beer. So uh, we're going to take one more break, and we'll be back with the Brown Breeze. Slick Willies, Slack Jawed, Salamander, Slurp, Slip, and Slide sh- Sideshow. Are you... <laughs> Are you a hanker for some good old down-home entertainment in your life? Do you enjoy watching extreme noodling, swamp gator shooting, some good old boys working over some duck thingamajigs, some real housewives from God knows where, or even beauty pageant children making a mockery of this country? Well, be sure to check out Slick Willie's Slack Jawed Salamander Slurp Slip and Sideshow on channel negative three, the home of dip spit and slap happy TV. It's the best down-home entertainment this side of intelligent. All right, we're back with the brown breeze section of the show. Uh, we're gonna, uh, we're still drinking the uh, worldwide stout, so we're not gonna spend too much time on that. Yes. Uh, so we'll just get right into the diarrhea of the mouth. Okay. Uh, an Ohio woman has been charged with child endangerment after she sneaked a sippy cup of vodka into a high school football game, and her toddler son drank from it and became <laughs> ill. Uh, police say That's that the crazy. 30-year-old woman brought the sippy cup and her 23-month-old son to a Kowina, Ko, Kan, Kanyet high school football game, and a relative later noticed something wrong with the boy when he couldn't stand up. That's just wrong in every way. Was she was she trying to bring it for herself? I would imagine so. But well, like Jonah's drinking drink- that apple juice of Uncle Lou's at one time. Granted, oh it was gosh. an accident, and he spit it right out and never touched it again. And even second guess was all of his apple juices now. But yeah, because he goes, <laughs> "Oh look, apple juice!" Yeah. It's like, and he just went. And- Uncle Lou was it- not quick enough on that. Oh no, that was terrible. <laughs> but the sippy cup of vodka. How much could the kid actually have ingested without throwing it back up? I, that's what I'm saying. He must have a taste. For I it. think Joe's had it on his tongue and like freaked out. Like, he, he couldn't. <laughs> ah, he was, he was, <laughs> oh my god, that was awful. I felt so bad because like, yeah, it was like he a, could not. Yeah, I mean, granted, just, what was he three, four at that time? Yeah, and it did 20. look like it does that look like apple juice. I can see where he made the mistake. Yeah, yeah. Taste wise, though, Lou was just not quite fast enough to stop <laughs> him. I felt so bad. But twenty three months old, and I guess the vodka stayed down. That's kid has a kid has a tolerance. <laughs> well, no, because he couldn't stand up. But in all, but but in all honesty, I mean, it, it, why would his mother bring you? And then she's going to drive the kid home, like after she'd been boozing it up all at the like football the, game, at the football game. Yeah, and why not just put it in like a regular Flask water or bottle something. or yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, it's clear. Just I'm, just use a water bottle. Oh, jeez. I yeah, save no the idea. sippy cup for the juice, you know, kids' juice, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, or go get yourself, like, a Tropicana bottle, drink half of it, and then fill the rest up with vodka. And I don't know. And even then, it's like if you're driving your kid to and from a football game, maybe you shouldn't well, let's, let's be hope, drinking vodka. Let's hope in good conscience that maybe the husband was driving. Well. It, it didn't say anything about the driving. Let's not make assumptions on a person He wasn't mentioned in the story, so I don't think, it. yeah, I don't think we should add to it. <laughs> Jeez. Ah, all right. All right, well, we, uh, we only have one question from a listener. Um, so our question is from at Bumhummer. Who from the Loaded Couch has tried hard sodas? And which did you try? And thoughts. So all of us aren't here, so I will bring this up again next week. But uh, have you tried any of the hard sodas? It's like the new, it's like they offer it as a beer. I tried the um, the Not Your Father's Root Beer. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think they had like a little tasting of it or something when at Music Fest or something. Uh, what'd you think? Because I haven't had one. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it was very mild. Okay. It did have for, for yeah. alcohol flavor, mild or yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and I think it is kind of low in your alcohol content. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, it, but it it's refreshing. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I want a hard soda. There yeah, I mean, hard... I don't know. I mean, like I said, I had a, I had a te- like a t- testing, so maybe it was like two ounces. Sure, but so I mean, I don't know how I would have felt after drinking a whole bottle of it. But from the initial taste test, it was but you like... don't mind it interfering with what your your take is on soda. Like you're not gonna be like, 
oh, you know, I'm going to go out to a restaurant and I'm going to get my root beer. Oh, this doesn't taste as good as the hard root beer. Or um, No, I don't think so. It's not going to interfere with that? No. I just I have that feeling because I love root beer. And I love like sarsaparilla and birch beer and I like all those kind of flavors of soda. And when I, I mean, we don't keep soda in the house. But when right. I have soda, I want soda. I don't want to go I agree. Like, I don't want a hard soda. I'm not yeah. going to the restaurant. No, I hear you. I hear soda. you. Like I said, I had a tasting of it, and it, it was good for what I had. Right. But I but I don't know how I'd feel about it if I had a, to drink a whole bottle. So I, I can't really say. I would have I probably would have to just go to a barbecue where they, they had it. I think they sell them in cans. Oh, okay. Yeah. So whatever. So then if I... If, a whole can. You probably if we were can. at a barbecue and someone had it in the cooler, I'd probably open one up and have. Oh, it. really? I think I'd pass. I think I'd drink a beer that I don't like because when I'm drinking, I want to drink. What if that's all they had beer. though? I'd probably just go for a regular soda. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I, it, I guess it would depend on if I didn't know anybody there. I would definitely have to drink it, the hard <laughs> soda. <laughs> Make yourself a little bit comfortable. Yeah, because I can't. You, I can't just socialize on the fly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, you're still yay, I'm going to assume. Yeah. Yeah, your beer's still good. Um, any change in the food? Or are you still your German turnover? <laughs> your, I forgot about turnover. With, did I say that before that it should have a little bit of gravy on top? No, but I saw what you had, so I, I knew you had that the gravy you knew on top. It, yeah. Okay, so. But you're saying, so a, a German hamburger or beef turnover, I think? They called it a beef, right? But it was like hamburger, you said? Yeah, it was like yeah, just it was like a pasty kind of. Right. Well, no, yeah, a lot of people from other countries or, or whoever's listening, our listeners aren't gonna know what oh, a pasty okay. is. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like it's like a dough. And it's but it's like a hamburger. It's not just regular beef, like sliced steak no, or anything. No, it's not like it's it's loose. Yeah, it's like hamburger, hamburger okay. meat, just so, kind of with onion a, and spices. So it's spices. a beef turnover, German beef turnover with brown gravy over top. Yes. Okay. Now you're making me want it again. <laughs> it was delicious. All right. Uh, well, thanks for listening. Again, uh, this is a short episode. Uh, we appreciate you guys stopping by. If you want to send us any uh, questions, please send it to at the Loaded Couch on Twitter. You can also catch us at the Loaded Couch or just the Loaded Couch at gmail.com. Uh, we will have a pre Thanksgiving. I think we're going to be recording the Wednesday before Thanksgiving show, which will release next Monday. Um, but if, uh, you know, in the meantime, have a happy ho- uh, holiday, everybody, and uh, hope to catch up with you guys next time. Uh, Thanks so much for listening. We'll catch you later. Bye.